Hi, my name is Daniel, and in this video, we'll be talking about simultaneous equations. So let's get started. So what exactly is simultaneous equation? When you say two or more equations are simultaneous equations, what you are saying is you want to solve those two or more equations simultaneously. So that's basically what it means. It's just a way by which you solve two or more equations simultaneously. Simultaneous means at the same time. So you are solving those two or more equations at the same time. Because those two or more equations, they are relevant in helping you get the unknown variable. So let's take a look at an example of uh, simultaneous equations. So here we have 2a plus b equals to 5. And we have 1a minus b equals to 1. So if you are presented with something like this and you are asked to look for the value of a and b, Essentially, you are being told to solve simultaneous equations. Why? Because here we have two equations, and the goal is to solve both equations simultaneously, meaning at the same time. So in this video, our concern will be on simultaneous equations involving two equations. And there are two variants of, of what we are, what to be discussing in, in this video. We'll be discussing a case where we have two linear equations then we'll talk about the cases where we have one linear and one quadratic one quadratic equation so these are the two variants we are going to discuss in this video so what are the two methods what are the methods for solving simultaneous equations there are several methods but in this video we'll be talking about two methods so as regards the methods We'll talk about substitution method, substitution method, and we'll talk about elimination method. Then I'm going to give you a shortcut as well for solving uh, systems of equations, that's simultaneous equations involving two linear equations. So let's start by solving these very equations. So I'm going to use both methods. I'm going to use a solution method and elimination method to show you how to solve these simultaneous equations. So let's start with the substitution method. Once again, we have 2a plus b equals 5, and we have a minus b equals 1. And the goal is to determine the value of a and b using substitution method. So in substitution method, the goal is to make one of the variables, to make one of the variables the subject of the formula. And once you've done that, you will substitute that value in the other equation. So that's basically how you go about using substitution method. I'm going to, I'm going to explain that right away. So the first thing you want to do is to name your equation. So this is equation one. Then this is equation two. Now, the next step is you want to make one of these variables the subject of the formula. And one rule I try to give is make, look for the variable that is the easiest to make the subject of the formula. So what I mean by that is which variable can we easily make the subject of the formula? If you pick equation one, for instance, you can easily make B the subject of the formula because B does not have, the coefficient of B is 1. And when you have 1 as a coefficient, it's very easy to make that variable the subject of the formula. We can also make A in equation 2 the subject of the formula because it's quite easy to make A the subject of the formula because it has 1 as a coefficient. So that these are, these are clues on how you make variables the subject of the formula. Don't just pick any variable. If you pick any variable, you, you, it will take you a longer time to, to solve if you don't pick the easier variable. So let's pick B in equation one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say making B in equation one, in equation one, the subject. So basically what we want to do is to make B the subject. And to do that, we just take, let's write this then you make B the subject, you transfer this to this side. So you have five minus two A. 
So now that we've made B the subject, you call this equation three. So the next step you want to take is to substitute, is to substitute B as five minus two A in equation in equation two because we've made b the subject in equation one so you can only substitute in equation two right so what that means is this in equation two we have a minus b equals one so we are going to replace this b by this five minus two a so that that means a minus brackets five minus two a equals to one so the next thing we want to do is to expand. So what that implies is you take a minus, you take minus five, minus times five, that's minus five, minus times minus two a, so that's plus two a equals to one. So the next is to solve for a. Now to solve a for a, we just simply collect like terms. So you take a plus two a on this side, then you transfer the five, the minus five to this side. And when you cross the other side, it becomes plus 5. So that's 1 plus 5. So let's add a plus 2a. That's 1a plus 2a. That will give us 3a, right? The 1 plus 5, that will give us 6. Then the next thing is to divide both sides by 3. And that will give a equals 2, right? So we've got our, the value of a as 2. So now you can call this equation four. So, but then what you want to do is to substitute, is to substitute A as two in equation three. So the goal is to take this equation three and replace the value of A, at replace A as two. So what that means is this. It means we'll take equation 3, which is B equals 5 minus 2A. Then the next phase is we replace this A by 2. And then that gives 5 minus 4. Then B is equal to 1. So therefore, we can say A equals 2 and B equals 1. So this is how you solve this particular simultaneous equation using substitution method. So let's... Look at how we can solve this using elimination method. So the original equation we have is 2a plus b equals to 5. And we have a minus b equals to 1. Now let's say one now one is elimination method. So how do we go about it? User elimination method involves eliminating one of the variables. So that's why we call it elimination method. You want to eliminate one of the variables so that you'll be left with one, then eventually you solve for that one. Now, how do we eliminate variables? So let's take a look at how we go about it. So this is equation one, and this is equation two, right? So the first one to decide on is, which variable do you want to eliminate? Now, you can decide on any variable you want to eliminate. You can decide to eliminate A. You can decide to eliminate B. But I'm going to explain how you, how you go about eliminating anyone. So let's say you want to eliminate A. What you want to do is to make both value to have the same coefficient. So for me to eliminate A, this must have a coefficient of 2. Because if they have the same coefficient, then I can subtract or add depending on the sign. So I can eliminate once they have the same coefficient, right? So it means if I'm going to, if I want to eliminate 2, I must have, I mean, A, I must make this to be 2 as well. So how do I make this to be 2? I'll just multiply everything here by 2. In other words, I will simply say multiply equation 2 by 2. So if you do that, that means you say 2 times A, that will give you this. You multiply this by 2, that will give you 2B. And then you multiply this by 2, and that will give you 2. So this is how you make A. This is how you attempt to eliminate A. So now, let's say we want to eliminate B. How do we go about it? You will look at the coefficients of B and say, how can I make both of them to be the same? In this case, they are the same, right? 
And since they are the same, you don't need to multiply any number to any of the equations. So the rule is this. Try to eliminate the variable that is easier to eliminate. In other words, if I have a variable with the same coefficient, just eliminate it. That's the easiest because you don't need to multiply anything. So in this case, it's advisable to multiply to, to eliminate B because B is much more easier to eliminate. I don't need to multiply anything. So because they have the same coefficient. Now, let's see how we can eliminate. Now that we have the same coefficient for B, how do we eliminate B? You eliminate by adding or subtracting. So what, what do I mean by that? If they have the same sign, in other words, if this B in equation one and B in equation two, they have the, the same sign, you subtract. If they have different sign, you add them up. Because if I add two things that are the same, if I, if I have minus two and I had two to it, it will give me zero, so it will eliminate. If I have two and I have two, since they have the same sign, I need to subtract so that I will eliminate. So if they have the same sign, you subtract. If they have different sign, you just add and that will eliminate. So what that means is this. You are going to add each of these. So basically, you are going to add this and this and this. So let's add them up. 2a plus a, that will give us 3a. Then plus b minus b. If you add them up, it's zero. So it's, they are, it, it's gone. Then 5 plus 1, that will give you 6. So you see, we've eliminated the value of we've eliminated b. Then the next phase is to divide both, is to solve for a. So a becomes 6 over 3, and a becomes 2. So this is basically how you solve for, this, that, this is how you apply the elimination method. And once you have one of the variables, the next is just substitute in any of this equation to get the other variable. Now that we know A, how do we get B? We just simply substitute, we just simply substitute A as two in any of the equations. So let's pick equation one. So in equation one. So if you do that, that gives you two into bracket two then plus b equals 5. Then that gives you 4 plus b equals 5. And b is equal to 5 minus 4. And b equals 1. Therefore, a equals 2 and b equals 1. So this is how you solve for, this is how you solve simultaneous equations using elimination method. So let's take a look at another example. Let's take another question. 2x plus 3y equal to 9, 5x plus 2y equals to minus 5. So in this example, we want to look for, we are looking for the value of x and y. So how do we go about it? So we're going to use both method as usual. We use substitution method and also use elimination method. So let's use substitution method. To solve this. So the, as we, we discussed earlier, the first thing is to determine which variable you want to make the subject. So in this case, I'm going to make x the subject. And x in equation 1, I'm going to make that the subject. So in that case, you will just say 2x equals 9 minus 3y. Then, two, then x is now equal to 9 minus 3y divided by 2. So that's the value of x in terms of y. So we say this is equation 3. Then the next step is to substitute equation 3 into equation 2. What that means is wherever you see x in equation 2, you replace with what you have on the right. So what that means is this. You just take this x here and replace with 9 minus 3y divided by 2, then plus 2y equals minus 5. Then you solve for the value of y. So to do that, we let's first multiply all through by 2, because when you have this kind of case, you want to take away all the fraction. And to do that, you multiply all through by the LCM of, of all of this fraction. So now the LCM is 2 in this case. So you just multiply everything by 2. So if you multiply this component by 2, you're going to get 5 into bracket 9 minus 3y. So the 2 will cancel out this 2. Then plus 2 times 4y, uh, 2 times 2y, that gives 4y. Then 2 times minus 5, that gives minus 10. So we've cleared out the 2. 
So the next is to expand, right? So to expand this bracket, you multiply 5 times 9, that's 45. Then 5 times minus 3y, that's minus 15y plus 4y equals minus 10. Then the next thing is collect like terms and solve for y. So we have minus 15y plus 4y equals, you take 45 to the other side, that becomes minus 10 minus 45. Then you solve for this, that gives you minus 11y equals minus 55. So what becomes y? You just divide both sides by minus 11, that becomes minus 55. Divide by minus 11, and that gives you 5. So y is equal to 5. So now you've got your y. So to get the x, this is like equation 4, right? You just substitute y as 5 in equation 3. So you just take your equation 3, right? Then you substitute y. That becomes 9 minus 3 times 5 divided by 2. And that gives 9 minus 15 divided by 2. And 9 minus 15 will give you minus 6 divided by 2. And eventually, x equals 2 minus 3. So therefore, therefore, we can say x equals to minus 3 and y equals to 5. So that is the value of, these are the, value, these are the values of x and y. Now let's solve this using elimination method. So let's take a look. Using elimination method, we have two x plus 3y is equal to 9, 5x plus 2y equals to minus 15, minus 5 rather. So to eliminate any of the variable, any of this variable, you need to make the, vari the, two, the variables to have the same coefficient. So let's say I want to eliminate x. It means x must have the same coefficient in both equations. Unless I want to eliminate y, y must have the same coefficient in in both equations. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to this, I'm going to eliminate the value of x. You can eliminate any of them in this case because any of them will still require you to multiply both sides. Okay, so let's eliminate x. So how do we eliminate x? Now the question is, what should I multiply? The, the first thing I want to do is to take the coefficient of x. So you take the coefficient of x in the first equation, and you take the coefficient of x in the other equation. So the next thing you want to do is to look for something like the highest common factor. So, so what's the highest common factor? In other words, if you look for the factors of 2 and factors of 10, or, or, or 5 rather, what would be the highest, uh, the 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 Low, the, 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 low, the lowest common multiple, rather. So what will be the lowest common multiple? Not the highest common factor. It's the lowest common multiple of both of this. So think about this. You have two. The another multiple, multiple of two. There are two, four, six, and uh, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. Multiples of five. They are as follows. Five, ten, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the question is, what is the lowest common multiple? So the common multiples and the lowest is 10, right? So 10 is that number that 2 and 5 can go in. So now that you've got the lowest common multiple to be 10, so the next thing is, how? what do you multiply to this, five, to this 2 to get this 10? You need to multiply 5 to this. Then what do you need to multiply to this one to get this 10? So you need to multiply two. So what this implies is where you have equation, equation one, you multiply everything by five. Equation two, you multiply everything by two. And by doing that, both of the x's there, we, we have a coefficient of 10. So this is what it means. It means I'm going to multiply five to equation one. And if I do that, it means that is five times Five, if you multiply five to equation one, 
what do you get? You get 10x plus 15y equals 45. So multiply 2 times equation 2. And if you multiply 2 to all of this, you get 10x plus 4y equals minus 10. Because minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. So we've successfully made these two to have exactly the same coefficient. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is to eliminate the value of x. And to eliminate, since they have the same sign, you just subtract equation, this equation 3 and this equation 4. Just subtract equation 4 from equation 3. So 10x minus 10x, that's 0. 15y minus 4y, that will give you 11y. Then 45 minus minus 10. Note, there's minus 10 here. So this is 45 minus anything you have here. So that's why you have double minus. So minus times minus gives plus. So that's 45 plus 10. And that will give you 55. So if you divide both side by 11, you are going to get y as 5. Now that you've got your y, just substitute the value of y in any of the equations. So in this case, I can substitute. I can substitute in equation 1. If I do that, that will give me 2x plus 3 brackets, the value of y, which is 5, equals to 9. So you will solve for the value of x. So that's 2x equals 15. Equal, uh, 2x plus 15 equals to 9. And then you have 2x equals 9 minus 15. And 2x is equal to minus 6. Then x is equal to minus 6 over 2, which is equal to 3, minus 3. So this is how you solve basic, these simultaneous equations using elimination method. Now we're going to look at some past questions, and let's see if we can solve some questions based on what we've learned. So let's take a look. So we're going to solve some questions from the UTME past questions. So I'm using the question search feature of the youth of the test reader UTM app to extract some question. All, all I had to do was to type simultaneous equation and the app just gave me question related to that. So I'm going to pick the year 2003 question 12. So let's look at the question. Find the values of X and Y respectively. If 3X minus 5Y plus 5 equals to 0. And if 4x minus 7y plus 8 equals to 0. So this is the question. Find the value of x and y respectively. So how do we go about this? Very simple and straightforward. So the first thing I want to do is to apply, is to decide what method you want to uh, use, the elimination method or substitution method. I'm going to use the elimination method to solve this. So the first question I want to decide is what am I eliminating? So let's say I want to eliminate x. So how do I go about it? So x has um, the, the following coefficient, 3 and 4. So what's the LCM of this? 12, right? So if I have 12, what, how do I eliminate this? The easy thing to do is to just multiply this by 4 and multiply this by 3. That is, multiply equation 1 by 4 and equation 2 by 3. Although another straightforward way you can always know what to multiply is, just multiply the first equation by whatever you see as the coefficient of the second. And multiply the second by whatever coefficient you can see in the, in the first equation. Although this is just a, 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 a straightforward way, but there are times that that may not be the ideal thing, but it will still work. If you follow this rule, it will always work. For instance, if the coefficients are like 8x and 4x, it may just you may just multiply this by 2, and that may be sufficient, right, to make both of them the same. But then if you decide to multiply this by 4 and you decide to multiply this by 8, you will still get the same value, which is 32, right? But the 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 point is you want the value to be smaller. If you want the value to be smaller, then you want to follow this LCA approach where you figure out the common, the lowest common multiple and then you figure out what to multiply. 
But well, the call long story short, we are multiplying the first equation by the coefficients of x here, and we are multiplying the second equation by the coefficient of the first equation. So let's solve it this way. Okay, so if you take the first equation and multiply by 4, you're going to get 12x minus 20y. We are multiplying all through by 4, don't forget. Then plus 20 equals to 0. Then if you multiply this equation 3, and if you multiply the second equation by 3, you're going to get 12x minus 21y plus 3 times 8, that's 24 equals 0. So this is equation 4. So the next thing we want to do is to subtract. So just subtract 12x minus 12x, that gives you 0. Then minus 20y minus 20y minus minus 21y. So what do you get? So we're going to talk about what the value is, but let's deal with the other one. Plus 20 minus 24 equals 0. So let's solve this. So minus 20y minus times minus, we have plus 21y. Then this will give you minus 4 equals 0. Then if you subtract 20 from 21, that will give you y, just one y, which is y. y minus 4 equals 0. So y is equal to, if you take minus 4 to the other side, it gives you plus 4. So y equals to 4. Now, how do you get the value of x? You substitute, you substitute y as 4 in equation 1. So we just take equation 1, which is 3x minus 5 into brackets 4. You just replace the y with 4 plus 5 equals to 0. Then you have 3x minus 20 plus 5 equals to 0. So that gives 3x minus 20 plus 5. That gives minus 15 equals to 0. So now you can say 3x is equal to 15. If you take minus 15 to the other side, it becomes plus 15. The next becomes 15 over 3, and that gives you 5. Therefore, we can say x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 4. So let's check what the right option is here. So the right option here is b. In this case, x is 5, y is 4. Let's look at another question. Let's take a look at another question. The second question I want to solve from past question is mathematics 2011, question 15. So here we have minus 2x minus 5y is equal to 3. And the second equation is x plus 3y equals to 0. So the question is, we should look for the value of x and y respectively. So let's take a look at how to go about this. So this time around, I'm going to use substitution method. It seems easier to use substitution method if one of the coefficients is 1. If you have any equation where the coefficient is 1, substitution method could be faster because you just make that one the subject of the formula. So in this case, I can easily make x the subject of the formula in equation 2 because the coefficient is 1. So I would recommend you use substitution method when you can, when one of the variable has a coefficient of 1. So in this case, I'm going to make x the subject of the formula in equation 2. So that means I'm going to say x plus 3y equals 0 then x equal to minus 3y. And that's it, like you've made x a subject without much stress. So then you want to substitute, you want to substitute x as minus 3y in equation one. If you make something the subject from equation two, you have to substitute in the other equation. So now we have minus two into brackets minus 3y minus 5y equals to 3. Now let's solve. Minus 2 times minus 3y, that will give 6y. Minus times minus plus 2 times 3, 6. Then minus 5y equals 3. If you, 6y minus 5y, that gives you 1y, which is y. 
equals to 3. So y is equal to 3. So one substitute, the next is to substitute y. The next is to substitute y as 3 in equation 3. So this is actually equation 3. So just take x equals minus 3 into brackets, the value of y, which is 3. So x therefore becomes minus 9. So we can say that the value of x is minus 9 and the value of y is 3. So let's say, let's check out the option that is correct. So from here, the right option is option C. Let's solve the next question. So the third question I want to solve, which is the last question, is 20, question from 20, which is this last question from non-word problem. I'm going to solve an additional question, which is word problem. So let's take question 12 from 2012. So the question says that we should solve for x and y in the equations uh, below. Now, this is a case where we have one linear and one quadratic. So I'm going to address how to solve this. So here you have x squared minus y squared equals to 4. So this is a quadratic, this is a quadratic equation. Then the other one is x plus y equals to 2, and that is equation 2, right? So the question is you should look for the value of x and y. So let's take a look at how to solve this. So in this case, what you're supposed to do is to make one of the unknown, the subject of the formula, and you, you choose the equation that is linear. That is, take the linear equation and make one of the variable the subject. So in this case, I'm going to pick x. So let's say I want to make s the subject, right? So I'm going to make x the subject. So x becomes 2 minus y. So this becomes equation 3. Now, the next is to substitute the value of x. So you substitute equation 3 into equation 1. So you, you, you take the value of x as 2 minus y and you substitute that in equation 1. So this becomes, this makes equation 1 to become 2 minus y squared minus y squared equals 4. So what's the next thing you want to do? You want to solve for the value of y. And you can do that by simply expanding this term. So I'm expanding this, this bracket. So how do you expand? You take this and you take another copy of it. This minus y squared equals 2. 4. Now you say 2 times 2, that gives you 4, and 2 times minus 2, that gives you minus, 2 times minus y, that gives minus y, minus y times 2, that gives you minus 2y, minus y times minus y, that gives you plus y squared, then minus y squared, which is this, then equals to 4. Now let's collect like terms. Collect like terms means you take things that are similar. You can't add this to this. You can only add these two together because they have the same power. Y squared cannot add up with just Y. So you can only combine this. Then these two can be combined. And this can go to this side. So let's solve for this. So minus 2Y minus 2Y will give us... Okay, let's take... That gives us minus 4Y, right? Then Y squared minus Y squared, that gives us 0. Then we want to take this 4 to the other side. That gives 4, my, this 4 here, minus this 4 that is coming down there. So that makes minus 4y to be equal to 0. Then if minus 4y is equal to 0, we divide both sides by minus 4. So that will give us 0. So y equals 0, right? So what we want to do next is to substitute, is to substitute y as 0 in equation 3. So you just take x equals 2 minus 0. Therefore, x equals 2. Therefore, we can say x is 2 and y is 0. So the correct answer is option C, where we have x as 
2 and y are 0. So the next is to talk about what problems that lead to simultaneous equations. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to take the question from 2020 model 1, and that's question number 31. So let's take a look at the question. Five years ago, the age of a mother is five years, lesser than tries her son's age. In five years' time, she will be 35 years older than her son. So the question is, find her son's present age. So how do you solve this question? How do you attempt it? So when you, when you come across questions like this, where they are comparing to people's age and all of that, the first one you do is to represent those individuals with a variable, with an unknown. So what you want to do first is to select mother's age. Let mother's age be, let's say, x. And let son's age be y. So that's the first thing we want to do. We want everything to be in terms of a variable, x and y, or a and b, or, or whatever. So now let's interpret the question. So the question says, five years ago. So what does that mean? It means, what about their age now? Minus five. That's it. Five years ago. Their age now minus five. That's five years. That's their age five years ago. So five years ago, the age of the mother. So when they said five years ago, the age of the mother is five years less. So this is how you create an equation out of it. You, whenever you see the word is, is is saying equal to, right? Five years ago is saying subtract five years. Uh, less than, it means a particular thing you are comparing is by a given amount less than. That is, if, if, you, if, you, if you compare the two age, the difference would be five. But let's just in, interpret it straight and plain. Five years ago, the age of a, of a mother is five years. The age of a mother five years ago is X minus five. That's the age of the mother five years ago. And they said is, is means equal to, right? Is, that is, is what? Is five years less than tries a son's age. Now, what was a son's age five years ago? Because everything we are dealing with right now is five years ago, right, for this statement. So you have to subtract five years from the son's age. Mind you, X and Y are their present ages. So five years ago, the mother is X minus five. Five years ago, the son is Y minus five. But the question says the mother's age is five years less than three times. So there's a three times here. Three times, look at tries as son's age. Tries means three times. Three times as son age is three times y minus five. But they said it is not just equal to three times as son age. It is five years less than three times. So when you hear the word something less, it means you have to subtract five from whatever you are, whatever they are talking about. So what we've just done is we've just interpreted our statement. We've represented our statement um, with an equation. Five years ago, the mother's age is x minus five. Five years ago, the son's age is y minus five. But then the question says that five years ago, the mother's age is equal to five less three times the son's age. You understand? So you have to first interpret it three times, you know, because we are dealing with uh, uh, board mass in, in, in the world of in the world of uh, 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 math, you want to give preference to the times before you interpret the subtraction. So that's why I have to multiply to his age force before taking a difference. So it's five less three times the son's present age. So what we've basically done is we've created equation one basically. So the next is to interpret the second question. So the question, the second question, the second part of the question, which is in five years' time. So when I hear the word in five years' time, they are saying plus five. That is whatever you have now plus five. So in five years' time, she will be. So this is what the question is. In five years' time, that is, if you take the mother's age, which is X, in five years' time is plus five, right? She will be 53 years old older than a son. So how do you represent that 
this 53 years older than our son. So when I you have to say will be, will, will be is also telling you equal to, you understand? Is, will be, they are saying equal to something. So five years, in five years' time, at age at that time, will be equal to 35 years, she'll be 35 years older than her son. So what will be her son's age five years time? So you subtract five from the son, but you add five in five years time to the son too, because we are dealing with five years time. So both of them was, the age of both of them must be increased by five. So in five years time, she will be 35 years older. So 35 years older than her son. So what does that imply? Does it imply we are we are adding or we are subtracting? So when you say somebody is going to be older, it means add. Because if I say I'm older than you by five, it means whatever you are, add five to it. That's what my age is. So if, if, if you say she'll be older by 35 years, it means whatever the son's age will be, she will be 35 more at that time. So that means you're going to add 35 to the, the son's age at that time. So we've gotten the second equation. So the question is now for us to find the son's present age. So we have to find the value of y. So that's it. Now that you've gotten the two equations, the next thing is to solve. This equation two. So now let's solve. Now to solve this problem, there are many approaches, but the first one we do is to expand and simplify to see to get all the coefficients sorted out. So let's let's do that for both equations. So what, what we want to do here is we want to expand here. So that, that's x minus 5 equals, here we have um, x minus 5 here equals 3y minus 15 minus 5. And if you simplify, if you take y to this side and you take this co constant to this side, you have x minus 3y equals minus 15 minus 5 plus 5. If you transfer this to this side, it becomes plus 5. So here you have x minus 3y equals minus 5. We cancel out plus 5, so you are left with minus 15. So that's, we can call this equation 3 just to, to be able to track our equations. So the next is to simplify equation two. So that's x plus five, right, equals y plus five plus 35. Then we have x my, minus y equals five plus 35, then minus five, and that gives x minus five equals 35. So this can be set to be equation four. So now, we have our two equations. So this is, so let's bring the equation three beside it. This x minus three y equals minus 15. This is equation three. I just brought it so that it will be side by side. So now what do I do? We can eliminate. So it's quite easy to eliminate since we have the same coefficient. Uh, x has the same coefficient as the other. So to eliminate, you just subtract. So x minus x is zero. So you say minus y minus minus 3y, then this 35 minus minus 15. So this will give minus y plus 3y equals 35 plus 15. So now if you so if you simplify this, you're gonna get 2y equals 50. Then y is equal to 50 divided by 2, which is 25. So the son's age is 25. So the son's present age is 25 years. And that's all you need to solve. You don't need to solve for the value of x because that was not asked. So the correct option is option B, which is 25. So this brings us to the end of simultaneous equation. And uh, see you in the next class.